Yeah, so basically it'll be me, it'll be Anand Oza and uh, Saket. I added a little team thing here so you can see some links. Anand should also be streaming at the same time. Or that's why we're calling it a team stream. Yes. Uh, uh, can, oh. can you hear me okay? Oh, I guess I should mute Discord. Sorry. Um, everyone, so... Okay, so yeah. So the plan is, you know, you guys can hear me, you can hear uh, Anand and Saketh when we're um, working on the... So what we're going to be doing is um, we're doing this virtual contest together uh, with Neil and Saketh, and Neil and I are both going to be streaming it. So I'll have to link to his stream as well. My stream shows finished on Code Forces. OK. Show starts soon. Okay, cool. It looks like it shows a uh, stream is running now. I guess I can open Neil's stream. Cool. Uh, are we quality issues. Um. Hey, can you hear me okay now? On uh. Yeah, I can hear you on Discord. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just had it deafened because I was also telling my stream like hello, and I didn't want to have us both be like hello, welcome to the stream at the same time. Yeah, totally. Um. Okay. Cool. So. And what links did you set up? So, what do you mean? You, uh, um, I guess you set a multi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Andrew sent me like a, I can put it in your chat. Oh, you have it. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's a way to watch both streams at once if anyone oh, it's uh, wants to do that. So that's pretty like, multi. That, that's kind of a high bandwidth thing. So, <laughs> right. I imagine it's most like power people, user. Yeah, it's like a power user only thing. But, uh, yeah, I was thinking we could go over the, the, the two div2 two only problems first as just kind of like a warm up to and just to um, just to do that for like any div2 viewers as well. What okay, think? that sounds great. Okay, I'm going to open uh, div2a then. So I'm opening up on stream. Uh, Socket, are you here too? I am. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so I have a, uh, yeah, got a little Discord overlay set up. You can see who's talking right now. And uh, yeah, so let's go through this problem. <laughs> Hep P one 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 said, "Should I watch your stream or on <laughs> the uh, like slash emoji?" <laughs> uh, Sinead Saket is already here. So I'm here on on voice. Yeah, uh, just on I'm Discord. A streamer like Neil and Anand, so I'm just gonna hang out on voice chat. 
括啊、嗯、，OK great。Okay, sorry, I'm still reading the problem.、Um, yeah, I'm still opening the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're looking、Registry、at the div two right、there. now. Div two a, yeah. Okay, so rearrange. Okay. Why is this problem so long? It is. It's, it's quite long, and it seems kind of hard. So some typos here. Change should be chance. Oh, it's it's not actually calculate the probability. It's just who's more likely. So just compare to fifty percent. Right, so obviously this is equal. This is obviously red. Talk if people are asking for your video. <laughs> Maybe next time. Oh, nice. Andrew suggested disabling show speakers only.、Um. <laughs> I personally, I kind of like show speakers only.、Um, Especially when there's like, if there's like two people, then it's not really necessary. But like, especially if there's like four people, it, it seems a little bit. It's easier to tell who's speaking than like. I, I feel like the highlight on the circle is hard to. I agree. Hard to notice. Yeah, I wish they had a like a compromise where they showed everybody, but then, like the highlight was much thicker. Yeah, yeah, like way more obvious. Because it's also. It also like I find it hard to follow when they flicker in and out, but then I also find it hard to see the little outline. So it's kind of a. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. A、saying. dilemma. Okay, so did you guys finish reading the problem? It's a long problem. <laughs> uh no. <laughs> okay, I I kind of read it. It looks like you make an you rearrange the cards to make two numbers and you see which one's higher. Yeah, yeah. So. So I mean, we're, and then we're just comparing like lexicographically.、Mm -hmm. So I was I was thinking like, okay, well, if the first digit is different, then like obviously、um, that decides it. But right, otherwise,、yeah. you have to like go down.、Um, but then actually, the the thing that makes it easier is that the it's not like rearrange the red digits and and rearrange the blue digits.、Right. It's just rearrange the cards. So you can so just delete just, like, all the cards that are equal, right? Yeah, there are just some like. Red smaller cards, and then there are some blue smaller cards, or, or rather, there's some red bigger cards, some blue bigger cards, and then some equal cards. And so, I think that just ends up being what it is. Right.、Uh, I'll warm up by coding this one. Yeah, I guess we can all just like quick code this. Uh, no, Andrew. We're just doing div two to、uh, cover the two problems that we won't be covering in the virtual. Yes, we're going to cover all of the div one problems. Don't worry. Yeah, that's that's not what I said. I said <laughs> I said we're covering the two problems that we definitely won't be covering. <laughs> yeah, but I feel good about this one.、Um, I guess I'll just do this. Make a div two folder. It's kind of funny how much harder this problem is if you permute the red and blue digits independently. Like it's much much harder, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's when I first read this problem, I was like, "Format、what? is a little annoying." I guess I'll just make files for A and B. Oh, I need. Let me grab my keyboard. Also, for me, Neil, you're crackling a little bit. Is that happening for Socket? 
I don't think so. Hmm, okay. I might have some kind of small audio issue. All right, no worries. Uh, it might be better now because I'm switching keyboards because earlier I was like typing on my laptop keyboard, which is closer to the mic. Let's see. All right, let's code this up quickly. Okay. Cool, we got it. Cool. I'm gonna start reading uh oops, I'm gonna start reading prompt B. This one is much shorter, which is good. <laughs> Andrew's mad that I have that I, that I didn't put any zero or I didn't put any braces in the code. <laughs> oh, I should have the link. Oh, we got a hydrate. Oh, nice. I got a hydrate from, uh, from socket. <laughs> Is that his way? Of, are you behind socket? Are you trying to catch up? <laughs> socket knows I, I haven't even it. opened the problem, really cool so he's good. Water. Wait, what do you say? The two of you to have equal hydration. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll move the Discord thing over to the bottom right. All right, I'll draw a picture. Okay, so so for B, I think what's going on is basically you're going to have n, o n over 2 floored steps in one direction and then n over 2 ceiling steps in the perpendicular direction. Mm -hmm. um, so if n is odd, that's like that's actually two different choices. If n is even, that's the same. And then between those two, they're just independent. Um, so basically, if you have k steps, then I think you, like in a certain direction, if you have k steps, I think there are just k plus 1. Wait, wait a second. 
Yeah, I think there are just k plus one possible uh, results. <laughs> so I think I'll just do this. Wait, sorry. Why are there k plus one? Wait, what is k here? So k is like, for example, um, let's say n is like a hundred. Mm -hmm. Then you have fifty north south steps and fifty east west steps. If we think about just the east-west, yeah. then basically the points we can end up at are negative 50, negative 48. So, so not negative 49 because of parity. Right. Negative 50, negative 48, negative 46, you know, then 0, 2, and then all the way to 50. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you count that, I think it just ends up being 50 plus 1. Oh, OK. Yeah, cool. That makes sense. Um, OK, so you can have anywhere from 0 to 50, like, left steps, and then the rest will be right steps. Uh, yeah, I guess that's another way to think about it. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Yeah, so so basically, answer is going to be um, we can even do this in one line if we want to be cute about it. Ah, for the first step, you can choose any of the four. Door. Okay, cool. So, uh, Marshall, please don't spam all caps. But I can explain again. Yeah. So, basically, let's take an example where n equals ten. Then you have five steps north south, and you have five steps east west. And once you realize that, these two directions operate independently. And so you can just do whatever you want in those two directions. And if we take north, south as an example, there are six different choices for this one, which is because you have anywhere from um, zero south, five north, or one south, four north, all the way to five south, zero north, which is what Anand was saying. And then similarly for this side, you also have six choices. So we have a total of six times six, so the answer is just 36. And then the other case is that if n is odd, then you can either do five steps north south, six steps east west, or you can do the other way around, six and then five, which is why we multiply by two. So this is basically, this just multiplies by two if n is odd and multiplies by one if it's even. And then otherwise, these are just the uh, steps plus one because n over two is floor of n over two and n plus one over two is ceiling of n over two. Uh, and what why do I hear like chuckling from you every once in a while? Uh, you know, just living my life. Well, okay, it's because um, I'm getting too many hydrates, and I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, oh, that's why people are memeing in my chat about bladders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody said, "Don't you I have to go understand. to the washroom if you hydrate during contests?" In your chat, um, <laughs> and then in my chat, a bunch of people are hydrated. Oh, you didn't rate limit? Yeah, you got to rate limit that. <laughs> All right, let me let me do that right now. Um, nice, the one one six one. Thanks for the follow. All right, let me let me figure out how to rate limit this hydration. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, channel um, points. Um, yeah, and then let's start the virtual. I guess soon. Yeah, I can start setting up the virtual now. All right. Um, hopefully, I remember how to set up a team virtual. Yeah. So. Also, we should uh, we should draw on the Jamboard so that like when one of us is explaining something, then the the other people can like see it. You can also type in the Jamboard with a text box. Oh, did you share it? I uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, I shared it. So if you go to Jamboard.google.com, it should show up in your um. 
It should just show up. Okay, let me try to pull it up. So right. it's for chat, this is for... Um, Oh, oops, I think I just, all right, anyway. I think I just exposed my email address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wait, did you see when I exposed my password on stream? I saw that. That was definitely worse. <laughs> yeah, although I can change my password. True. Oh, no, I'm going to get spammed by, <laughs> by my chat now. <laughs> Okay. It's okay. I'll just I'll have to delete that from the the YouTube upload. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think I rate limited hydration. So that's good at least. Okay, I have the Jamboard, so we're good. Cool. Oh, nice socket. There's uh using the laser pointer feature. I actually think the laser pointer feature is like super clever because like a lot of the time when you're using this kind of thing, you do want to just point to something. And like normally, I would draw and then erase. All right, let me. Uh, okay, cool. Clear frame. <laughs> uh, one more. Okay, all right. I'll have that one. Is more there not a line drawing tool? Uh, a straight line. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think there isn't. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Maybe you can, can hold Alt or something. No. Yeah, you can hold Shift. Shift. Oh, cool. Cool. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, and I will. Um. Okay. What time right do you guys back. want to start the virtual in? Um, let's do. Thirty something. Yeah, let's 30... do like thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah. All right, All I'll right. set it up then. Sure. Just to make sure there are no like technical issues. And also, yeah, I have to be right back. <laughs> that, okay. was a, that was a baby sip. Oh my god. Did I miss a hydrate? Sorry, Kicklux. All right. We got it now. Um, OK, cool. So. Um. <laughs> 500 milliliters per hydrate uh my chat demands I that's you had uh, to go. yeah uh, i'll be right back <laughs> Quest in these uh, final two and a half minutes. Oh, sign in, saving up for WordBand. Yeah, WordBand last time was <laughs> not great. It was pretty pretty hard. I uh, too difficult. Oh yeah, Crow. Last time I I, I was talking about uh, 
like potentially refunding half because I, I kept saying the word anyway, but I, I checked and there's no way to actually refund half, unfortunately. There's no way to refund channel points at all, right? I think you can reject a request like outright. Oh, just, like, and that'll it. give... Okay. Cool. Okay, come on, Crow. I, I at least tried. You definitely... I had to like spend double effort at that point explaining the problems and like at least attempting to avoid saying <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, I need to join the virtual. <laughs> Already playing the next one. Yeah, I, I did. I did have to go and make it more expensive after that. That was uh, a little too easy to get. <laughs> I felt like uh, it was a little too early. I was expecting it a lot later than it actually happened. Um. Okay. Cool. We'll be starting in about 40 seconds. True, yeah, the 20% the sub boost makes sense. Yeah. Any weird strategies you guys want to do? Like start on F? <laughs> I guess we can start on A. Kind of the John strategy. That's not weird at all. <laughs> I heard I heard C is hard though, you know, just some uh, from the the scoreboards. <laughs> we'll see. All right, three, two, one, let's go. All right, should we just all look at A? Sure. Yeah, it's short. Let's just do it. Hmm. Right. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so my first thought is if something divides, you know, A1 plus BJ and like A2 plus BJ, it divides A1 minus A2. And in fact, it divides any pair of A's subtracted. Right. So the answer is going to be a factor of the GCD of all the... Wait, is that right? The answer would be a factor of the GCD of all the differences. Yeah, so I think you can just do like A2 minus A1, A3 minus A1, and so on. AN minus A1. And take, just take the GCD of all of those. And then the answer is always going to be a factor of that. Um, right. All right, all but there's there's like a lot of a lot of potential factors of a number up to ten of eighteenth. Actually, we were talking about this recently. It's about a hundred k in the worst case. So that's not enough quite yet. Oh, but then but we can. No, we can't even prime factorize it because it's like 10 to the 18th. I mean, technically, you could throw Pollard row at it and factorize it, but that's kind of excessive. Hmm. Oh, Mirabic, we have a hydrate. So we needed to divide all these differences, but then we also needed to... So if something divides all these differences and it divides A1 plus Bj, then it will also divide the rest, right? Uh, sure. 
So should we just find the GCD of, so we should find the GCD of the differences like first, and then the answer is like that GCD with like A1 plus BJ for each J would give you the J different answers, oh. or sorry, the M different answers. Oh, I see, I see. Is that enough? That might be enough. Um, yeah, so let me, let me write this on the Jamboard. So let G equal GCD of AI minus AK. Then answer sub J. I think this would be right. I think this would be GCD of G and then A1 plus BJ. Um, yeah, the reason being that if it divides all these differences, that means it would divide all the rest of the AI plus BJ. Um, and then as sense. a result, yeah. so that shows that it is a divisor. And then, well, yeah, and it's, it's definitely the GCD, right? Because um, yeah. <laughs> we would just be adding more elements in. All right, should yeah. I implement okay, that? So basically it has, to, it has to divide A1 plus BJ. For sure. And it has to divide, well, G. And then, so those are both necessary. And then once you do all that, it's also sufficient. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then we compute G. We don't actually do it in quadratic time, because this this part seems quadratic. You, you can, can just compute A2 minus A1, A3 minus A1, A4 minus A1. Just always use A1. Yeah, that sounds good. And then you're good. All right. And, um... Did you say you want to implement it? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Is Socket still here? I haven't heard anything from him. I'm here. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for uh, Socket's waiting for the later problems so we can bring in the big guns. Oh, A already has 140 solves, and B has one. Wow. People got A in one minute. That's kind of crazy. Wait, are you serious? Yeah. Because I feel like we did it pretty fast. I think we did it OK. <laughs> All right, I'll start looking at B. It's a good story considering all the hydrate that's going on. <laughs> Wait, what do you say? Uh, the second one is about water. Oh. You have a hydrate, by the way, on him. Oh, suck it on top of it. Oh, Shiner TW, subscribed with Prime. Thanks. I got so many hydrates, I have to get my next water bottle. Though, of course, uh, now that Shiner's a subscriber, I might have to take a suggestion of one water bottle, one water bottle per hydrate. Oh, whoops. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm submitting A. Okay. Pulkit 111, hydrate. Oh, Zianwar, thanks for the Prime subscription. Oh, oh my that's God. a lot of subs. Nice. 20 pixels, uh... Pointed out that I sorted my array before I read it, but luckily I didn't need to sort it, so we're all good. 
All right, time to read B. Uh, Saka, did you finish reading B? Not quite. Okay, let me know when you do. Hmm. So one thing is, there's this this kind of trade off between like we're if we want to figure out which glasses to end up with, there's a trade off between picking the ones that already have a lot of water in them, which involves less spilling to get water into them, versus picking ones that have more capacity, because that way we can end up with more. That makes sense. Wait, you spill half the water every time you pour any? Yeah. That's uh, honestly pretty embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, also the other thing I'm noticing is like, you should never pour the same water twice, right? So there's no reason it should ask for like nine digits of the answer. <laughs> like the answer will always be like at worst 0. 0.5, right? Um, I see. Yeah, like you'll never, right? So you'll never divide a single pour of water in half more than once. Yeah. So basically, if you pick a set of glasses that you want to end up with, you're just going to take all the other glasses and just like greedily pour them into your set. Right. And you'll you'll just avoid hitting this. AJ, like you'll never go past AJ because that's just wasteful. Uh huh. Um, and so otherwise, it's just like we can like write out a formula, but it's like some of the right. B of the ones we're keeping, and then like the plus the min of like the sum of the other Bs versus like the the extra space we have. Oh, and the sum of the other Bs over two. So we can kind of just imagine that all the glasses, like once you pick your set of K glasses, you can just imagine that um, you have like one giant glass that's all the other ones and one giant glass that you're pouring stuff into, right? When we're like computing the numbers. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, so I think really what's happening is we can assume we have we take half of every glass, and then the ones that we pick, we gain an extra half of those glasses, and that also affects the capacity we end up with. Right. Oh, Alier Prime, thank you, or thank you so much for the sub with Prime. It's a double Prime there. <laughs> Okay, I'll write down a couple of our assumptions, or not assumptions, but conclusions in the in the Jamboard. Oh, whoops. Yeah, observations. I think it's also worth noting that the total capacity is pretty small. It's at most 10,000. Oh. And it kind of feels like we're going to do some kind of knapsack type. Right, we're probably going to knapsack this. We need a certain capacity to hold what we're going to end up making. And we want to get to that capacity without wasting too much water by not picking those as our final holding classes. OK, uh, so observations. Um... Yeah, OK, so I think we could just do a knapsack that's like Given the sum of AI, what's the max sum of BI? That makes sense to me. Where, oh, and also K is part of the state. So it's like, it's like DP of K and sum of AI equals the max sum of BI of the same set of glasses. Because those are the ones that you get like a full one X on instead of half X. Yeah, we, we actually, we solve it for all possible K and print out all the answers. Yeah, exactly. 
And then what's the runtime? It should be like, uh, it should be 100 to the fourth. Yeah, I think it's 100 to the fourth with good constant, like really good constant. Is it maybe just 100 cubed? Because uh, I think it's, I mean, so my, my knapsack idea is the state is 100 by 10,000. And then we iterate through that 100 times. Oh, um, I think we could also just store for each total capacity what's the most water we can make. The, the values inside our DP don't need to be booleans. They can just be the. Um... No, no, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's a it's the most sum of bi given the sum of ai and k, but like k is also part of the state. Oh right, okay, got it. We care about how many glasses we. Um, Lm ten piush redeem hydrate. Okay, yeah, I think we pretty much got this. Um, Eighteen people have solved it. <laughs> how do we how do we look on the standings actually? I haven't really seen this. Well we've done like one problem, right? Team thing. We're at oh, 200. I see. That's funny. Nice. 212th. <laughs> um Should I implement this one? Does anyone in particular want to code this? I could do it. Okay. Sure. That sounds good. Sounds good. Uh Socket, do you actually want to screen share your coding uh no pressure but if you can then uh we can put it on our streams sure so do i just uh share my screen to the discord channel yeah yeah and then i think i'll be able to like pop it out and then move it onto the monitor that i'm streaming uh sign ed Saketh is not streaming <laughs> yeah someone just asked me is Saketh streaming and i was and i had to answer them with no as well Seems like uh seems like he should stream. <laughs> As the most popular of the three of us. I'm afraid I'll have to drink too much water if I do that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fair. I should uh for my next stream maybe I'll add a dehydrate option that'll cancel out the next hydrate. Um, I'm just going to start reading some more problems. All right. Nice. I can watch Saketh type really fast now. All right, I'll read C. It's kind of long. Yeah, that's what I'm on. Oh, this is just because they're one based. It would be a lot cleaner if it was zero based. Okay. Oh, why? There's like a plus one like everywhere. And like yeah. a J minus two. <laughs> yeah, that's super weird. Yeah. There was an at coder problem recently kind of like this. Um, that like arc F that I think you did on your stream. And they actually zero indexed everything in that just because they like realized that it would make it so much cleaner. Mm, yeah. Okay, so if you want a square matrix of size n. Okay. Is Latin square a real thing, like a puzzle or something? Like Sudoku? Uh, I'm not too sure. Oh, hey, Andy Gorian. Nice to see you here. 
Uh, someone asked so me if Sokka was one of the problem setters. Oh, that's so cool. Round. I didn't realize that. Someone asked in my chat if uh, if Socket is also using Vim. Yeah, so actually Socket is using uh, Vim with a lot of the same plugins that I use, and he's also using the library that I use. Um, and like even like his autocomplete and stuff is set up the same way as me. So, you know, glad I could Did help Did he learn there. it from your stream? <laughs> yeah, he probably saw it in my stream. Um, no, no, but, but yeah, jokes aside... <laughs> um, yeah, jokes aside, for anyone watching, uh, a lot of my setup is from Socketh, which is why our setups are similar. Like, I use his library. Um, someone asked, is that LSP? It's you complete me. With claim D, I think. Okay, C seems kind of scary. Oh, I was still reading it. Uh, do you want to just summarize it in like a sentence, or should I just read it? Uh, sure. Yeah. Basically, you have a one thousand by one thousand matrix. <laughs> Every row, it's 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 n by n, so it's square. Okay. Every row and every column is a permutation of one through n. I, I think that's like called a Latin square. I think that's why they said that. Um, yeah. So there are six operations you need to support. Right. And first four are just like shift right, shift left, shift up, shift down. Where, for example, shift right, you uh. take every row and you shift it one to the right. Um, similarly for the other ones. And then maybe a tricky one is the row inverse. And similarly, there's a column inverse, where for every row, you replace the permutation with its inverse. OK. And so obviously, you could do each operation in n squared time. Oh, OK. I see. We, we just have to process some are, operations. Yeah, there are 10 to the fifth operations. I think you just output the final result. Yeah, that's all you have to do. OK. So we have to figure out how to like compose these, I guess. Yeah. And so all the shifting ones are easy to compose, right? We kind of just the way that we would do that is like move the like move the origin. Effectively. Um, like they're easy to compose oh, with I each other. So. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. So one person got C, which is Kevin, <laughs> case number forty-eight. He's he's also virtualing. Ah, so, okay. Uh, I guess he like virtualed wait. it earlier, or is he doing it like with us? He's like he's kind of doing it with us, I think. That's cool. Hopefully, wait, we why beat did him. This link me here. He's not in here. Oh, he skipped B. It's interesting. Who does that? All right. Uh, so okay, we'll... Yeah, I like your shift idea, but then how do you handle inverse? That sounds So like if uh... they bounded the number of inversion operations, then we could do this pretty easily, right? We would like each block of shifts and stuff we could condense into like a single operation. And then we could just process like a small number of inversions. Sure. But they don't. <laughs> Wait, so, yeah, so when you do, oh, when you do inverse, what's actually happening? You're like reversing all the cycles, right? Yeah, all right. Uh, let's. Wait, you're reversing the cycles? Of the permutation. Right? Okay. Oh, and if we do a shift, we're not affecting the cycle. Wait, is that true? No. No, I guess a shift could affect no, the it, cycles. It definitely, it definitely yeah. affects. Yeah. Like if you start with the identity and you shift it, then you get something that's like one cycle instead of n cycles. Yeah, no, you can like totally mess up all the cycles. What is this? this is like three... Oh, I'll add the You're team wrong command. answer on B. Wait, what? Aww. 
Maybe you guys see something in my submission. Okay, let's look at it. Let's team debug. Oh my god, there's so much in here. All right. Well, so should I just look at the submission? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. So A, B, and yep. How much water can we pick? Okay. How much is zero X FF? I guess I could just do this myself. It'll be minus one. Oh, I, I just do that by mimicking to minus one personally. Oh, I see. Wait, are you sure you want to do minus one? Maybe you need to do minus infinity. Uh, when I iterate over the states later, I actually check if they're negative one or not. Yeah, but the problem is you can like add to negative one and get a positive. Oh, you check. Oh, okay, maybe that's fine. Like if it's an invalid state, you just continue, right? That's what you mean? Right. I think it's just safer to put it as negative infinity. Probably, yeah. Oh, what is this? No, it's this one. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait a second. Wait, did you init your ants to zero? I did. You mean the vector of doubles? Yeah. It, it'll um, initialize to zero when you create it. OK, I usually just put a zero, but if you're sure. Wait, what? Um, oh, okay. Zero losses. Uh, just to reiterate what we're doing, um, so I, to make sure I understand it. So we're picking eyeglasses and we're trying to maximize how much water is in the glass given the capacity right and then later we're checking for every possible capacity just what's the answer that we get right okay okay and then you add half the water uh is it possible that oh never mind Uh, just to make sure um, I understand oh, your oh, indexing. Oh, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Oh yeah, you're iterating picked in increasing order, so you can reuse the same thing twice. I see. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, like you'll just pick like the best glass and use it over and over. Yeah, you need to go decreasing, and then you're fine. Wait. Okay. 
Yeah, do you see what I mean? Like, uh, he has his for loop up to n, and then he goes picked from 0 up to i. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the, nothing prevents him from just reusing it from 0 to 1, and then from 1 to 2, and then from one, from 2 to 3, and so on. So he wants to iterate picked in decreasing order, or...? Yeah, if you take picked from i to 0, then you'll never be able to use it twice. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Change that when it passes. I, I see. So I, I is the... Uh... Okay, we got it, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... Nice find. Um, okay, so that's uh, submitted. Yeah, we got AC. Right. Or at least... Nice. No, we actually got AC because it's virtual. Like, virtual doesn't properly tell you pre-test results. Nice. We're... Uh, nice. Our, our rankings okay, been so halved. Two solves on C, one solve on D. Mm -hmm. uh, got a hydrate. What's Kevin doing? He hasn't gotten beat. Somebody asked me to tell them how they can grow faster. And then someone else said he'd rather hydrate. Um, cool. So, yeah, I guess I'll keep uh, trying to think about C a bit now. I think it seems kind of doable. Yeah, so I think C is like flip the cycles, right? Or, or like... Inverse is flip the cycles because if you do it twice, it just goes back to normal. Uh huh. Um, I don't know how much that helps though, because right, because the cycles. Like, how does shifting affect these cycles? Pretty weird. Do you think the cycles formulation is definitely helpful, or do you think it's like uh, possibly just more complicated? Like, should we just try an example of like a permutation, and then what? shifting does to the inverse like i guess well i mean the inverse is like very it's very strongly like just reversing the cycles like that's just what it is yeah but, um okay but you're saying maybe there's another way to think about it yeah i guess it wasn't clear to me how whether like thinking about it like the cycles was actually easier or harder because then like, I don't really know what shifting does to the cycles, right? Yeah, so I guess, okay, so one example I had here was uh, permutation is, wait, what? Okay. My permutation was 3, 4, 5, 2, 1. Mm -hmm. um, what that looks like is we have a 1, which points to, oh, Am I having syncing issues? Maybe I should just refresh. I, I can see your three, four, five, two, one. Okay, one, which points to a three, which points to a oh. five. Oh, it also doesn't not. draw a line until you let go of the line, just in case that was what you were thinking. Wait, let me bring this up a little bit. All right, five, which points to one, and then you have two. And four, <laughs> which point to each other. So those are the cycles. Um, and so if you do the inverse, then you end up with, I mean, you just flip the cycles. So right. you get five, four, uh, one, two, three. Yeah. Right. And then I guess let's say we shifted it first, right? So like four, five, two, one, three. Like now what would okay. the cycles be? Um no, I guess... like, sorry, one points to four one and four point to each other. Um two points to five points to three points to two. I think you actually have a stylus, huh? <laughs> uh no, I'm using to... I'm using my laptop trackpad. Oh, trackpad. Okay, that's, that's no. Nice. I'm just kidding. I, I have a an iPad and an Apple Pencil. Oh, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So now, well, what I noticed is the cycle sizes are the same. I don't know if that's a no. I don't think it's that's definitely a coincidence, right? Because if you start with the identity permutation yeah, yeah. and then you shift it, you get like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you can start with a derangement and then shift to get like fixed points. Mm-hmm. Um, 
one and four to each other. Two, four. All right, what's the inverse of this permutation at the top? Which one? Um, two, three, four, one. one. It's it's just going to be a. Oh, I four, guess this one is one, an two, example three. where you're just reversing the cycles, right? Yeah, four, one, two, three. Okay, so I guess that wasn't super interesting. So if you just have one big cycle, then um, then this is like pretty easy, right? Oh yeah, so if one of the permutations is a single big cycle, or the identity, like it'll always stay like that, right? With all these operations. Oh wait, if it's a single big cycle, it'll always. And I'm also counting a uh, the identity permutation as a single big cycle, even though it's like not. I guess. Wait, is that true? I don't. Oh no, because if you have like. Because if you shifted this by like two, then I think it would break into two cycles. Yeah, because like one would go to three, which would go back to one. So never mind. So even yeah, if you have I, a single think, big cycle, it's still like tricky. I think there's probably some like cute representation here that makes it makes every operation like very simple, and that's like what you want for the solution, basically. Hang on, let me reply to a few things in Okay. Okay, we can um, we can read some more problems too. I think. Uh, I'm gonna read D now. All right, I'll keep thinking about C. Okay, sounds good. Saketh, do you have any thoughts on C or another problem? Yeah, C seems hard. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll skim D and then go back to thinking about C, possibly. Oh, this is like the same problem. You have some like array and you have to do queries or operations. <laughs> I don't know if that means it's the same problem, but... Flip and reverse. Oh, equal number of zeros and ones. Hmm. Okay, this seems like a key problem. This, this feels kind of at coder, this problem. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I, I can see why John would like these problems. <laughs> yeah, John loved this contest, right? Even though he did do, terrible. Do, are we already above John? Oh, uh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, okay, nice. All right, Wait, let me values. plug sockets GitHub. Fifteen hundred, two thousand, twenty-two fifty. Okay. 
Alright, I need to add a socketh command to my Twitch chat. Because <laughs> that's like, <laughs> my most frequent question is, where can I get all of socket stuff? I got a question chat. Who is John? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this problem seems kind of... It almost seems simple, but I assume it's hard. I'm just reading E as well now. I think I'll just go read everything. Mm, okay. Yeah, C, D, and E, they all do feel like a very kind of mathy, observation-y contest. Yeah. Isn't that like John's favorite kind of contest? Yeah. I, guess, I guess there's no generating functions. Oh yeah, um, we, we, we definitely know we can't do these problems with generating functions, right? Because otherwise John would have done them. I don't know. We'll see. So it's a little um, intel for us. Johnny B Cat in chat asks, "Is this a class assignment? This is so. This is Code Forces, which is a programming contest website. Um, and basically, we're doing like a virtual run through around from uh, very early this morning. <laughs> as soon as generating functions got mentioned, Andrew reappeared in the chat." <laughs> Yeah, so when we're talking about John, we're talking about uh, Jay Schneider, 2013, who he kind of has more of a math, math background initially, but then he got into code forces. And basically, the, the problems in this contest are very much like the style of problems that he likes. And I mean, we were surprised that he did this contest because it was at 4.30 AM for him. But he did, and unfortunately, he didn't do super well. He only got A and B, and then I think he had some wrong submits to maybe C or something like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we should solve C. Hmm. As in, you want to think about C? So yes. right now, C has seven solves, D has three solves, E has one solve, which honestly leads me to think that C is like possibly harder than. Oh, because D. like you're taking into account like people like read it first. 
ghosts to see yeah yeah so like you know some fraction of those people went to d instead and they caught it fair enough it's also the fewest points so that's the reason there unless so unless you have like a big observation now that like makes a lot of progress i feel like it makes more sense to all right. To try D or E. All right. We'll, we'll solve D. I'm I'm kind of down for either one. Uh, I didn't read E actually. Is it? Uh, yeah. I would suggest just reading it. Okay. Oh, I got another hydrate. Um, Uh, star mm12 i'm using so the laptop i'm using it it's kind of funny it's a uh, it's actually from walmart but it has some really good specs i can put the specs here and i got it with like a really good sale so it was only uh like 9.99 yeah anyway um If you finish reading E, let me know if um, you understand the last sample. I'm trying to think through that. Oh, OK. Um, wait, the last sample? <laughs> no, Crow, not, not $9.99. Oh, Alier Prime. Yeah, it was, um, it was in one of the Dave Lee videos, I think. It was the Tongfang um, Overpowered. Or I guess Tongfang was like the manufacturer. It was called Overpowered. The overpowered laptop. It was a funny thing where like they had these desktops, overpowered desktops that were really bad. And so then they started selling these laptops that were actually quite good. But because the desktops were so bad, their brand name was kind of destroyed. And so they just sold these laptops for a super good deal. All right. Um... Uh, did you finish reading it? Yeah. Um, so now I'm looking at the sample. Uh, I'm just writing it on the slide five of the Jamboard. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so those are all losing positions. Also, zero, zero is a losing position because it's always a losing position. Um, yeah. And yeah then... so, so clearly, zero, zero is losing. One, one's winning because you can go to zero, one. Uh, Two two's losing because it's one of the losing positions. Three three is winning because you can go to three zero. But then Wait, five sorry. four. Do you mind I writing guess... these down? Uh, I sure. can't keep track of like a ton of numbers. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just it's just an explanation of the first four samples, four queries. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, sorry, I thought you were writing out the whole chart. Okay. No, no, so... not the whole chart. So zero zero, you said was losing because by definition, yeah, one one is winning because you go to zero one, yeah, two two is losing by definition, and three three is yeah. winning because you go to three zero. Yeah, and then so five four is trying to figure out. Mm, so okay. it, it means that like anything you can go to from five four is winning. So yeah, five two is winning because you can go to two two. Five one is winning because you can go to zero one. Five zero is winning because you can go to zero zero. I don't know about five three. Right. Um. I guess five three you can go to four three, which is losing, and then five three is winning. Why is four three losing? Because any move you make is reachable in one more move to one of the losing states. I think. Okay. Wait. Um. Maybe that's not right. <laughs> 
four, three. Yeah, so if you decrease the second pile at all, then it's then the person can decrease the first pile to take you to a losing state. Yeah, and then if you decrease three, the first pile sure at all, that. you can make it one, three. And then... Oh, but from one, three, the other person can't get to any... Um, Oh, one three is losing, right? So then four three is winning. Yeah, maybe we should draw. Okay, I'm gonna draw a chart. I think that would be helpful. Sure. Oh, like a table. Yeah, yeah, a table's a good idea. Yeah. So like, I guess I'll do the first pal on the vertical, like as the row. And the second pile on the columns. Sure. Okay. So I guess I'll put in the losing states with a red L. Okay, so you were saying zero zero is losing, zero one's losing. Three zeros losing and two two is losing, right? And then we want to also fill in the the rest. Okay, yeah. So I mean, anything in the same. Like row or column coming after a losing is winning. Okay. Is there like a coloring in? I guess not. Oh, like a paint bucket? Yeah, there's no paint bucket, uh, but there is like a brush, I guess. I don't know. I'm kinda yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Okay, cool, yeah, yeah. Just put winning in black and then we'll put losing in red. Oh no, these are too big. So you were saying that anything that comes after losing at all, like in either direction, like this is winning, right? Is did I understand you correctly? Yeah, because you can you can just go to that losing state, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, all right, I'm kind of drawing. So that's why I'm just like drawing, filling this cool. out. Yeah, right, so, so actually then... three zero being losing mm -hmm. is like almost irrelevant. Uh like the only thing three zero oh wait, is that right? Hang on. No, I, I sorry, it it is relevant because it affects like its its row. But column wise it's almost irrelevant. Oh man, there's so many more to fill out. Yeah, I mean, I think the green arrows are probably fine, right? Because that's the only way that we can make something a winning state. Sure, I guess. Um, all right, so then 1, 2 is an L, right? Right. Oh, it's saying it can't sync again. Oh, yeah, I guess refresh. I'm trying to refresh. Yeah, I'm trying let to. Me, let me reply to my chat a little. Can we copy the letters as images and paste them? Does that work? Let me see. <laughs> I don't know how to. Oh, this I can paste. Yeah. OK, that's a good idea. Oh, no, I rotated it. I'm just going to delete this one. Oh, I keep rotating. Okay. And so then this is going to be an L. Oh, that's the wrong color. Oh, so 4 3 is an L. Okay, okay. So. Right, like anything that's not filled in yet by one of these green arrows is going to be an L, right? Yeah. All right, cool. So we have a really bad algorithm for this problem.
already. Okay, so like I guess the like the simplest, like the simplest algorithm that comes out of this would just be like iterate over all the cells in some like you know order that goes from like top left downward, and then um, for each cell you can just check if there's something like either to the left of it or up of it if it's not already. And then if it is, if there's nothing, then add it to the losing states. That would be like the simple yeah, I think we can implementation of what like we... Set of, I think we can keep a set of like... It's like, basically when we get an L, we <laughs> mark that row and column as winning, kind of. Right, and we don't actually even need to maintain like a set of all the individual L states, right? Because once we mark a row or column as winning, like that'll just continue on. Yeah, we don't really have to. Yeah. Um... Oh, Koki Fige, thanks for the subscription with Prime. Nice. So one thing that was interesting here is we marked one, two as L because I can close it. We marked one, two as L because um, it's kind of like the top leftmost thing that's not covered by any of the other L's. Mm -hmm. um, zero, zero, one, two, two, and three, zero. So So I'll put a little circle over oops, each of the initial ones. So these are the initial losing states. Yeah, and then one, two becomes a losing state because it's not covered by any of the given right. losing states. And then same thing, four, three becomes a losing state. Five, four becomes a losing state. And then I guess if we just keep oh. going, we would actually get like. It would end up being all the diagonals are losing states. We just get like states, infinite right? L's in this diagonal, right? Nice. <laughs> 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 we're, uh, we're twinning over here. Okay. Cool. And then all the rest of this stuff would all be winning. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it seems like good progress. Now this seems pretty doable, especially because um well can can we come up with like some efficient way to like once we're oh okay, so maybe we can have a queue of like losing states. So like once we process a losing state we no longer want to process anything else in its row or column ever again, unless there's another initial losing state. Um, yeah, so what I'm thinking is, I think we can... Oh, I think we mind. can, like, make additional... I think the additional L states are, like, something like O of N different diagonals here. Um... Sorry, it won't just be one diagonal? Well, like, okay, imagine that instead of 2, 2, and 3, 0, that we just, like, push them way out. So it was, like, 200, 200, and, like, 300, 0. Okay. Then we would get a huge diagonal starting at 1, 2, right? Um, okay, so, like, if in this picture... One, two, Which yeah. Are, uh, oh, yeah. Like in our yeah, I'm just drawing kind of off to the right. Like, imagine we had like a new grid where like we had these two losing states like somewhere floating in it, right? You're saying like we would have some diagonal of losing states coming in here. Uh, and then yeah. it would stop when it hit like either of these like two like winning lines, and then like 
there would be a new diagonal yeah. that started at like it, it's a coincidence that these things kind of look like well, they're lined up yeah it, yeah it would most likely hit one of them first and right then... like something like this and then i think you would just keep going like yeah you basically have you're basically just building diagonals and then you hit an event which is like an l row or an l column mm -hmm. and that like disrupts your diagonal and then you just start doing a new one right um okay um polkit 111 asked so the grid has l as the given states what would lead the person to lose who had the next turn so the idea is we're just going to mark every cell in this grid as an l or a w l means lose w means win um for example zero zero is always an l because you can't make any move and right. then you know the given states like zero one or two two are else and then basically a W is a state where you can get to an L on the next move. So basically you can go down to an L and give that to your opponent, right? And then an L is a state where um, either it's one of the given Ls or it can only reach Ws. And so that's why, for example, um, for example, three one is a, or rather three three is a W because it can reach three zero, right? And so everything in this row and everything in this column is gonna be a W because it can reach this state. Wait. Whereas, uh, Sorry, are you pointing at something? Yeah, on the Jamboard. Oh. Can you see my cursor? I don't know if you uh, can. No, I can't. But there's a laser pointer tool in the bottom of the sidebar. Oh, cool. So you can see this now. I can only see it when you let go. <laughs> when I let go? What does that mean? Like if you start drawing a line and then you let go, then it'll show me you drawing the line. It's a little weird. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah, everything in this row and everything in this column will be a W because it can reach this. Yeah. Um, and then this one, two is an L here because it can only reach this and then these two, which are all Ws. So that's what we're doing here. Yeah. Okay, great. Sounds like it makes sense. Um, yeah, so basically we're observing that like Ls appear to be just a series of diagonals. And if we can just find these series of diagonals, then I think we can just solve the problem. Um, by the way, just looking at the submissions, so 18 solves on C, 4 solves on D, 1 solve on E. So all of them have been solved at this point. Also, I looked at F a little bit. It seems it seems kind of crazy. But uh, I do know a couple ideas that might help on this problem. But it probably makes sense to do E first. Also, what happened to Sakath? I like, haven't heard anything from him. I don't care. I read all the problems. <laughs> Which one are you like thinking about? Um, I, I think what you guys are talking about for E makes sense for sure. I agree. Okay. By the way, you agree what? F seems cool, but maybe um, not the first one to go for here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So Kennedy had Kennedy has A, B, and then he did E, and then he did D. By the way. Um, so interesting ordering there. Okay, but yeah, if we can just find these diagonals, I think we're probably good. Right. So how would we do that? I think... Um... So, I feel like we can kind of just draw some rays for, like, the the green lines that come out of the original losing states. And then yeah. you kind of have all your... I guess at every... Inter uh, I guess the way that I'm thinking about it now would be like you look at every intersection of two rays. The problem is that could still be like n squared. Or. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think what's going on is like you take the initial L's, you draw these rays, and then there's, there's a concept of like the top leftmost square that's not covered. Right? Mm -hmm. which in our case would be one, two. Right. And so we, we would put an L there and then we would draw two rays. And then the top left square after that would be like, usually it would be two, three. Um, right. Like here. Except in, in this, this case, case we have a new something. L. Yeah. So like in general, yeah, we have like, okay. Yeah. We have like some L's. We have a zero, zero L. We have some other L's. Right. And then we draw these lines hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, and then, um, yeah, so then we, we have like a top left thing. So we're gonna make an L here. Oh, how do I make like a dot? I don't wanna make like a huge. You could just scribble a little circle, again. I guess. That's not. <laughs> oh, I just mean like using the pen tool. Yeah, yeah, it's, I tried but to I guess that. it's, it like it's messy. Tiny. Maybe you can use the paintbrush L, tool. L, L, L. And we're just gonna like go down in a line until we like hit one of these. And then once we hit that, um, Right. That's the part that I'm still a little bit uncertain of. Like, how do we get to the next? Um... Uh, did someone drop off the call? Oh no, never mind. Uh, um, I think Sokka just stopped streaming. Okay, cool. So well, he he stopped coding a while ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're gonna hit a line, and then we don't put an L there. We put a W there. So what does it mean when we put a W there? Let me let me do a little bit on like pen and paper and see if I can figure something out here. Alior Prime Redeem Hydrate. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use the restroom pretty soon. Um, <laughs> oh wait, does this generate like? Wait, how does this one? Oh no, this goes down. This goes down, 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 down. down. Right, right, right. All right, I'll go to the next page of the Jamboard. So L L. So L L L. L L L. L L. L. Let me hit this. This is nice. Got another hydrate. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty, okay, I'm pretty, like, pretty, feeling pretty good about my hypothesis that there are O of N diagonals. Um, it's just, like, how do we... Like, how do you continue it? To, ...to find them, yeah. Like, I guess, like, I... Oh, wait, sorry, are you saying there are O of N total diagonals? Yeah. Oh, like, are you counting when one, like, gets interrupted and continues as, like, the same one? Or That's is a new it... one. That's a new one. Oh, there are only O of N of those? Yeah. Okay, I guess... Oh, because it hits... It has to hit an event. Like, yeah, an event has to be one of the initial shortcut, like losing states. Right. And if two things hit the same event... But if two things hit the same event, would they continue in the same... Couldn't they potentially continue in different places? What do you mean by two things hit the same uh, event? Here, let me draw something on the second slide of the Jamboard. Or the sixth yeah, like slide. I, I also think that the diagonals are like ordered where like one diagonal comes totally before the next diagonal. Okay, hang on. I'm actually going to run to the restroom. I had too many hydrates. <laughs> oh, right back. I see. Like you can't have... Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'll I think that's right, but you can double check. I might be wrong. So I drew this case on the Jamboard um, where you would have like two diagonals that both hit the same uh, horizontal line. But this one actually never happened because all of these diagonals would actually emit rows of winning. And then those rows of winning would cancel out this diagonal. Like this diagonal would get cut off by these rows. Um, like a while ago. Cool. 
Wow, this is a really tough contest. Hmm. By the way, uh, no spoilers, but did anybody in the chat um, actually do this Div 1? Like, or do the, do the Div 2, I guess, this morning? Just out of curiosity. Okay. So you have a diagonal, you extend it. And then... Oh, I am reading Neil's chat, if you're uh, talking to me, Andrew. Nice. OK, I'm back. Okay, so yeah, I think I, I think I understand why there's O of N. Like I, I drew this example on the Jamboard, right? Where you have like the potential problem would be if you had two diagonals that both hit the same green line. But oh, wait, one, sorry, one of the diagonals- chat. Can you uh, repeat what you said? Oh, okay, sure. Um, the potential problem would be if you had two diagonals, like um, I'm on slide six of the Jamboard, that would hit the yeah. same green line. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not possible, right? Because the second diagonal, as you said, would have been obliterated by the first diagonal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think already. we can almost code this. I think basically, if you take the set of like rows and columns of the shortcut positions, then any diagonal will start. Um... Oh wait, that's no, a little weird. Yeah, like in one of like in the Got first example, there's a there's a diagonal that starts kind of at a point that's um wait, how do I Oh I see. There's a diagonal that starts at a point that's not one of the starting positions. It's kinda of like at an intersection of the starting positions. So it's a little weird in that regard. Yeah, I mean you can have like you can have like the initial L's could look like here and then here. And then the first new L will be like here, right? Uh, oh, are you saying like that's like a ton of L's? Like this, these are just a ton of L's. These are a ton of yeah. L's. Yeah. The first L, first new L will start here and then yeah. you'll have diagonal like this. So I think maybe um, we can pre process the initial L's. And like only consider the ones that are like going diagonally this way. Oh, I'll write that in black. But like I think we can only consider like some L's that are along like this kind of shape. Cause if you have Is that right? If you have like an L here and then an L here. Um Oh, I guess like this L does matter for some of the stuff that's in between them. Uh, Frostfire Roman all said, "Miss this round. Is it worth to virtual this one?" Yeah, I would say this is. These are some pretty nice problems so far. I think they're definitely hard. So <laughs> that is the thing I would mention as a caveat. But I think they're quite nice overall. Um, yeah, let me just think about this a bit. I think we can like figure out a clean way to, or a cleaner way to implement this.
Oh, nice. One of my viewers is going to do A through C of Div 1. Nice. That's more than us so far. That is more than us, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's look at the solve counts now. Oh my gosh, wow. 30, 33, 7, 5. Yeah, so I, I think like... That's very low. <laughs> I think going through going for E is fine. Um, yeah, definitely low though. Yeah, there's a huge cliff from B to C compared to yeah, like I think usual, it would be I like think. I think it'd be quite good if we got two of these, <laughs> like two of C to E, and I, we should definitely try to get at least one. I think we can get E. We just need to like clean this up a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I have oh. the same question, GM Mark Zuckerberg. He asked, what is Sakath? <laughs> yeah, Sakath, where are you at? And are you just... Uh... I'm mainly thinking about D. I don't think I have anything too helpful yet. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So I guess we're, we're kind of just distracting <laughs> him a little bit. Polkit101 said, secretly solving F. <laughs> nice. Like, we told him it was a bad strategy, but he wanted to do it anyway. Yeah, he's probably already implementing F, but he's just pretending he's thinking about D. It's like the classic, right? Okay, so here's a... Yeah, I think the main thought. question is, like, how do you handle these rays? Maybe we can do a little coordinate transformation. Um, like what? Like, I guess I'm thinking we care a lot about these diagonals. So... Maybe we can transform into like a diagonal coordinate system to kind of see like, well, I guess what I want to do is I kind of want to know, um, given array, like what's the next event that it'll hit. And uh, here, let me kind of draw a picture. Like if you have like an L here and its ray goes out, you want to know if it's going to hit... Um... Oh, I guess maybe this isn't necessary. I was going to say, like, you want to know if it's going to hit, like, another L first. But I guess, really, what you want is you just want the minimum... You want the first time it hits a array. Yeah. But the thing is, you can't only consider... <sighs> so I guess what I'm thinking is, like, it would be kind of nice if you could just consider only the horizontal lines and only the vertical lines like separately, but you can't because like you could have a horizontal line like this, where this vertical line it wouldn't hit. If that makes sense. Wait, so why is that a problem? Like, I don't know. It just complicates it slightly. Like, um, I guess what I'm thinking is you have to somehow find the highest up vertical line that has a sufficiently to the right or sorry yeah we want to find the leftmost vertical line that's also starts high enough that you actually hit it if that makes sense okay yeah so if we hor if we focus in on like horizontal for example yeah we want like the this is kind of awkward but it's the minimum like x the minimum x where, because x is like the vertical coordinate. The minimum x where, there's a point at x, y, and x plus y is less than or equal to, or like y is less than or equal to the point that matches x up here. Right. So that's kind of like where I'm thinking uh, if we consider like the first thing that you'll hit, I would have thought maybe this isn't right, but I was thinking if we think about the value of just x plus y, that that provides some sort of like useful ordering. But maybe not. Okay, it's basically like the minimum x such that x, y is one of these, and y prime minus x prime is less than equal to y minus x, where 
sorry, the minimum X prime. Sorry, can you be the minimum? Or, so like if, uh, if our diagonal starts at x, y, okay. we want the minimum, for horizontal, we want the minimum x prime, such that there's a point at x prime, y prime, and then y prime minus x prime is less, less than or equal to y minus x. Um, and then also we need x prime greater than or equal to x, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah. I see. So basically, starting points that are like we only want to consider Wait, starting add, add points above the diagonal. Yeah. Well, out of here. Okay. Um. Well, this is to find like the end of the diagonal. How do we find the start of the of the diagonal? <laughs> the start of the next diagonal? Yeah. Or even just like the start of the first diagonal. <laughs> um well the start so every diagonal starts on an L, right? Well, I mean, yeah, that's where I mean the diagonals are L's. Like it's sorry, it starts on one of the initial L's. What? What do you mean? Like that's, every diagonal. That's not true. Well, okay. I guess I'm considering the diagonals as like continuing, right? Like we want to find the end of the diagonal, and then I'm like, we want to figure out where the diagonal continues on. Uh, I'm not sure that I get what you mean. Um. Oh, I guess it doesn't even really work like that. Okay, got it. Um, I was thinking that you have a diagonal that like keeps going and then it hits one of the the green lines one of the winning lines and then it stops there and then it kind of restarts after all those winning lines are over but you can also just think of that as a new diagonal which is i guess the framing that you're using right yeah wait let me just think some more Yeah, I, feel, I kind of feel like I just need to think some more and then something should happen. Some good stuff should happen. Hmm. All right, uh, I'll be back in two minutes. I'm gonna go to the restroom. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Um. Okay, I think I can. I think I can find like the start of diagonals, and then the other thing we need to do is figure out how far does the diagonal. Yeah. Can you do this using a merge sort tree? No, uh, I'm not going to do that. Okay. No, the start of diagonals is just like, let's say you have row column. You want to know if you can start a diagonal here? Uh-huh. Well, let's just see, is there a ray that kills this square? And that's just like, given this row, what's the earliest column of a of well, an L? Well, yeah. And then but... given this column, what's the earliest row of an L? And if there's nothing that kills your square, then you start a diagonal there. So how do we find the... Uh... Like, how do we find all of them efficiently, then? Yeah, you just do that. If there's something that kills your square, it either kills your row, and then you just do row plus plus, or it kills your column, and you do column plus plus. OK. Also, um... Oh, also, Gennady got A, B, C, D, E already. Wow, that's really good. Um, OK, wait, I mean, he sorry. got first place, so. <laughs> he, here's a quick thought. Um, we're kind of thinking about finding we're basically thinking about figuring out like the entire grid and then querying these starting points um is there any notion that maybe given a starting point it's easy to figure out where it goes like given a starting point we can follow its diagonal backward what do you mean backward like fig like your starting point is losing only if it's on one of these diagonals. So you can start at your starting point and then you can go up and to the left from your starting point until you hit something. But and if you go too far, you can hit a W. Right. So like you have oh sorry, by starting point, I don't mean starting point. I mean um <laughs> I mean, like, one of your query points. Like, the initial positions in the following M lines. Uh, so, like, here, I'm going to go back to slide um, slide 5. So... Oh, you're saying, like, instead of constructing such a general solution that can, like, do queries online, we could just, like, take the queries in advance and pull them right. back. So, like, let's say you want to query this square, uh, 4, 5, that I've circled in yellow. So I'm thinking you go diagonally upward until you hit a line. And then if you hit a line, like from one of the starting positions, you hit a line. And if you hit a line from one of the starting positions, um, and it's only a horizontal line, then your state is winning. And if you hit a horizontal line and a vertical line oh, at the same the time, line? your state is losing. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I mean, it seems like it works for this example, at least. <laughs> I, I think that's like more or less right. Yeah. Okay. Um, should I try coding it up? Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm not sure how to efficiently do that though, but I figure you know. Yeah, I I do want to code this one though because I actually haven't coded anything yet. Okay. Um, yeah. Good idea. But yeah, I like that idea. I think that is. I think that's nice. Actually, it's like. Now we just have to diagonally go up and see what ray right. we hit. And I think the only important rays are the rays from the starting locations, like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the input right. locations, yeah, so I think, uh, which simplifies it a lot. Yeah, I think that is very simplifying. I think we can just do like a, now we can almost do like a sort and sweep type of thing. We, we basically want to find like, what's the first, if we take this diagonal line, what's the first um, Horizontal ray we hit. What's the first vertical ray we hit? Right. And then the question is, are they the same? Yeah. Exactly. Or like, yeah. Are they like at the same, uh, like at the same time or location or whatever? However you want to phrase it. Yeah, and we actually don't even have a special case for like the initial positions because like, you just hit it. They right just there. hit themselves, right? Yeah, they hit themselves. Um, okay. Cool. And okay, so I think the rest of that is just like a query problem. It's like the x prime y prime thing that I was mentioning. Yeah, um, so it seems like you have a handle in this. I can I can probably finish it off. Maybe you cool. should talk to Sakif on like D or whatever he's doing. Oh, okay. I was thinking whatever I wanted to take Maybe another doing... crack at C. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think so... if we get E in any other one, that's like really good. Yeah, uh, Sakith, how are you doing? I can continue thinking about D. <laughs> okay, like <laughs> e, like by yourself. 
<laughs> so, this this happens on like our open cup team contest too. So it's just like the like disappears for an hour person, and then we ask him like, "Hey, what what's going on?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm working on this problem." And we're like, "Oh, I didn't realize you were doing that problem. I thought you were doing this other problem." <laughs> well, at least we knew he was doing D. All right. So, but you're like good on it. You don't want to like discuss it. Well, if you have anything helpful, I'd certainly want to hear it. I just uh, don't have anything worth sharing. Okay, I only have things that might not also that might also not be worth sharing because uh, I only thought about it a bit. But basically, like, I don't know. Well, it seems it, like if you, you have like some alternating stuff, stuff, maybe maybe you guys should like work together on C instead or something like that. That might make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So socket. What I was thinking on D is if you like flip and reverse like a thing that's alternating, it has no effect. Um, sure. And like, I don't know. I guess like what I would think about first is like, can you make the first number? I mean, this is kind of obvious, right? Because you're trying to make it lexicographically smaller. But can you make the first, um, the first digit zero, like, as your top priority? <laughs> I don't know. I assume those are all observations you already had. <laughs> sure. Like from a greedy perspective, you want to make as many zeros at the beginning as you can. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I have some thoughts about C, so I, I do want to work on it a bit and see if I can make some see if I can make some progress. Um What are your thoughts for C? So my thought about C was that um I wanna see what happens. So like it's not super clear to me what happens if you like invert something after you shift it, like how the shifting affects the inversion. But I kind of just want to play around a little bit and see what happens if you invert something and then shift it and then shift it back. Or sorry, I think I misspoke. If you invert something, then shift it, then invert it again. Um, so that's what I was like thinking of, uh, like looking at, if that makes sense. Seems reasonable. Cool. All right, I'm uh, I'm just gonna write my thoughts on or my experimentation on slide four of the Jamboard if you want to look at it. But also feel free to, you know, finish up D. Hmm, okay, I guess I'll actually start with some maybe more interesting permutation. Three, four, five, two, one. If you invert this, you get Okay, yeah, I'm going to start coding E. Hmm? I'm going to start coding E. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so the diagonal is going up and left, like, works out? Yeah, I think it all works out. It's just like a sweep, seg like tree type of thing. Awesome. Um, Polkit111 asks, anyone want to team up for practice? Yeah, I think that'd be, I think that'd be cool if, if people in my chat ended up teaming up. <laughs> Okay, nice seeing you, Frostfire, Romanol. Hope to see you next time. Oh, someone made me hydrate again. All right, so short. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay. Cool. 
questions. Um, why capital letters? Yeah, I just like using capital letters for like the main um, counting variables. Uh, hey, Leo Prime, I didn't quite get your question. Do you use two pre-switches? Uh, Toper is like a brand, I think. Oh, like my keyboard? Yeah, no, I just have a, I have a Microsoft Natural Ergonomic Keyboard 4000. I'm going to turn it around this way and you can see it. Oh yeah, don't people um, always think you have a mechanical keyboard, but you instead just type really loud? <laughs> Thanks, Anand. <laughs> well, I, I'm pretty sure someone asked you this in a previous stream. They were like, are you using a mechanical keyboard? And Oh wait, no, maybe not. Maybe that was someone else. Why isn't this... Why isn't this complete? Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, it might have been Andrew's stream that someone asked that. Oh, I see. Hmm. Oh, that's there's a problem. Okay. That was crazy. All right, so we're just gonna do two. Yeah. Poke it one 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 with the hydrate. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna solve one dimension, and then I'm gonna flip coordinate dimension. That should make it pretty clean. Nice. And what's the output? It's just like a yes/no for everybody, right? Yeah. Lose win. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, I need like a sort operator. I'm going to sort by x. Hmm. Oh, this bug. Okay. Um. Uh, Jump and Smoke asks, what is array int2? It's it's kind of like, I use it kind of like parent int. Like a lot of cases where most people use parent int, I often use array int2. Um, this is something I've talked about with Ekner Walla. And it's just like a cleaner thing where you can index with 0 and 1, which is nice. Um, and you can, it, it still sorts the same way as pair. So it compares 0. And then if tied, it compares 1. So it's just like a kind of a better version of parent int, honestly, in a lot of cases. Start this with this. Okay, so what do we need now? We need like a. <laughs> what result would I get alone in ICTC World Finals? Uh, I don't know. It's a hard question to answer. <laughs> um, pro I probably would not. Metal. It's pretty hard if you're just by yourself, but I guess I can't like say 100% for sure. Did you go to World Finals uh, as a team? Yeah, we got uh, seventh one year. Wow, nice. Would I know the other people on your team? Um, maybe. So one of them was Alex Jai. So Alex Jai. He was actually more of a math guy. Yeah, I remember like, he he went to IMO and stuff, right? Yeah, he he got <laughs> he got a perfect first place at IMO. Yep. <laughs> so he was pretty good at math, and uh, yeah, it was nice having him on the team. I mean, there were there there was like one problem at the end where like we were just like, huh, what should we do now? And then or I was just kind of like, huh, what should we do now? Because we had solved all the easy problems, and then Alex was just like, oh, I think I know how to do this problem. I was like, okay, let me hear it. So he just explained it. I was like. 
yeah, that sounds pretty good. So then I just coded it. <laughs> nice. And then we got that problem three minutes before the end. Like literally minute 297. Um, demoralizer, any tips about how to make to world tournaments? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just like, you know, one thing is just get good yourself, like get good at code forces. I think, you know, you're already quite good. And then beyond that, it's just like practicing as a team, making sure you like work well together. Um, Cause there are a lot of cases where, you know, you can take like three people who are individually really good and you put them together and they just kind of like, sort of like stop on each other and like don't work together. Don't work together very well, and so like that's also an important thing mm. to uh, practice. Um, yeah. So anyway, so Alex Jai was one of the teammates, and then the other teammate was Spencer Liang, who um, was actually he was like fifth place for making the IOI team in the US one year. So he was also quite good at that point. Um, but then yeah, by the time we were at World finals, he was definitely a bit rustier compared to high school. I think that's like pretty normal for mm. US competitors. I see. Like yeah, in college, so. you kind of just focus on college and not on like only competitive programming training. Yeah, I actually have this bug where like I literally my up and down arrow keys stop working in Sublime. I don't understand that. Okay. I should focus a little more and like yeah. code up this problem. Gotta hydrate. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing here? Socket, so how's D going? going? Still hard. I'm feeling a little stuck on C if you wanna help me with it. Do you wanna uh, talk about the executions Uh sorry, what? Do you wanna discuss it? Sure. Um, so we talked about it a little bit earlier. Okay. I don't know if you were here for that. Um, or like if you were, uh, listening to that, but basically like the part that I'm trying to figure out what to do is it seems like there should be some way to combine operations when one of the operations is an in inverse. And that's kind of the the tricky part for me i mean like that's the tricky part for this entire problem right <laughs> right like, um, if you just have a bunch of um translations then right. it's pretty clear that at the moment yeah you're, you're just moving you're just moving the origin around <laughs> right right and so the part that's like not that seems pretty complicated though is that it seems like shifting oh wait a second hold on Sorry, maybe this is kind of obvious, but like doing a shift or something is like applying a permutation to every. Oh, okay, never mind. So I was thinking maybe you could think about composing permutations instead of just having these like simple like shift kind of items. But um, is there any other way to think about replacing a permutation with its inverse? Like as a permutation or something? I guess not really, right? Not that I know. Like that doesn't really make sense, I guess, because well I mean it would just be composing it with like its inverse twice, I guess. <laughs> like once to get to the identity and then another time to get to the inverse. But that's not, that's not super useful. Um I guess okay. Uh, let's let's try this. I guess um, I'm gonna try writing some stuff on slide uh, slide five of the Jamboard, and let me know if it seems like promising to you. Okay, so so if we have some 
permutation. Oh. Man, the idea just left me. Okay. Accord, accord zero minus. So I'm kind of thinking this, right? So imagine you have your initial permutation P in like a given row. Um, like, I'm still trying to figure out how to solve this problem if you only have uh, R, L, and I, which is still hard, it seems. Do you agree with that, or is that easy? So your shifts are only in one dimension? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm just imagining you just start with, like, a single permutation, um, right? Or you start with, like, a 1 by n uh, matrix. Right, I see. Yeah, it seems like a pretty good problem to tackle. So I'm imagining your initial permutation is p, right? So your operations that you can do are, like, and then let's say L and R are like the permutations for like shifting left and right. So your operations. Okay, you guys, I just like... I coded it and then it just passed the sample the first run. So nice. I guess I'll just submit it. Please do. So you can like compose it with like these shifts, right? And then you can invert the whole thing. And then you can like continue composing it with like shifts. Oh, we got a wrong answer. Shoot. Um, does that make sense so far, Socket? Like this framing? <laughs> F. 14 minutes, okay. So then, what you want to do is like, like if you imagine like uh, inverting this, this would be like the same as putting the thing on the other side of it, I'm pretty sure. Does this seem valid so far? Uh, Socket? I think so. Okay. So if we so if we only had a single row and that was all we wanted to do, I think what we could do is we could keep track of the right and then let's say you ended up inverting all this at the end, then you would get something like I'm going to omit the uh the the circles for composition. <laughs> You would get something like this. So I think if you keep track of the parity of like the total number of inversions so far, you can kind of like figure out whether you're putting your shifts at the beginning or the end of this like chain of um, this chain of like function compositions, right. and whether or not they're inverted. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that seems like pretty, uh, like that actually seems quite doable, right? Like we could code this up and like solve this like simple problem now, I think, given what we've discussed. Do you agree? How do you apply all of them at the end? Um, well, once you like finish doing this, you end up with like some block of shifts and then either P or P inverse and then like some block of shifts. Right. So then you can condense all the shifts into a single operation. So then you can do like these three operations. Like you can do all the shifts at once, then like the permutation, then oh, great. You, you only have a single P. All the other shifts. Yeah. And P mm -hmm. is the initial permutation. And then what we want to do is we want to like take this function and then we want to apply it to like the identity. And then that gives us our answer. Got it. Um, right, like if we did no operations at all, then we would want to find P of the identity, which is just like your initial permutation. Um, so that makes that sense, makes right? Sense. Okay, cool. So now how do the rows and columns interact? That's So the thing is like when you, when you do a vertical shift, it doesn't actually affect any of the rows. So like it doesn't even matter. But there is this kind of tricky bit where I'm pretty sure if you do a vertical inversion, 
it like messes up a bunch of like the horizontal right. things. <laughs> In fact, it's not even obvious to me that when you do this, it preserves the permutation property. <laughs> Is that obvious to you? Yeah. Like, it's not obvious to me that, like, when you invert the columns, that like all the rows stay permutations. I see what you're saying. Hmm. Oh, maybe we can express this. Okay. Um, hmm. Maybe we can consider like the original matrix as like a bunch of permutations, like the whole matrix as being like a bunch of permutations like p1 p2 p3 um like this and then we would apply it to like some matrix that's like uh the identity in every column does that make sense i don't know if i did my matrix multiplication right okay yeah Wait, this is like clearly wrong. Um, since that's not how uh, matrix multiplication works. Like, <laughs> but like, I think we maybe we can imagine the original thing. <laughs> ah, nice. And Agorian said in the chat, "Good question." So, I think. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we should try to understand this property a little better. <laughs> um, okay, I'm writing a slow solution for E. Gotta like hustle a bit. Oh shoot, gotta really hustle a bit. Okay. Would it help if uh, we looked at your submission? Uh, sure. Because I, I think I don't know. I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess with eight minutes left, we should probably be looking at E. Like, I don't think that we can code. Like, I I do think we're on the right track. Like, this does seem like kind of a breakthrough compared to what we had before. Yeah. Oh, nice. But uh, I don't know how to get to the rest of it. <laughs> um, Neil, should we just read your submission, or do you want to like sure. explain it? Uh, just read it. Okay. Cool. Um, Sock, if do you have it open? If you want, I can explain yeah. the algorithm to you. I, I was mostly following along. Okay, cool. So, Queries. Okay, that, was, that seems good. Um, let me get a generator. What's this? Oh, I guess we'll three args. Okay. That's...
Yeah, okay. Oh, is it this? Oh. Oh, oops. This should be the other way. Wait, is what we said earlier correct? <laughs> what, the thing about going, uh, like, up and left? Yeah. Like, like is the core assumption of the solution correct? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Do you think it's wrong? Do you have a counterexample? I think it's wrong now. <laughs> um, what... Is the reason that for that? So, if you have like zero zero and oh. five, then it'll think that one six is a lose. Sorry, if you have a zero zero, like zero and zero, and you have zero five, it'll think one six is a lose. Okay. So if you have zero zero and zero five, it'll think one six is a lose. Right. Because okay, yeah. It and it's, zero, because it hits zero five and it's mm, I see. It's not a lose because one one is a lose. Okay. Is it possible that you can patch this by only considering um like only considering the initial points that are like on a diagonal like like if a if an initial point is after and below, if it's right and below of another initial point, then like delete it. Or maybe just if it's in the same row or column as another initial point, then delete it. Uh I still don't think that's right. Mm. Oh, we have two minutes. <laughs> Looks like our strategy was bad. <laughs> you mean uh, bouncing between all the problems? Or I guess doing E. <laughs> all right. Well, good luck on. Oh, fix maybe what you e. said is right. Maybe what you said is right. It's like. All right. Co code it up. No, but then doesn't that mean we just throw out everything because of zero, zero? Uh, no, I, th I think only if it has the same x or y coordinate, not if it's diagonal of it. Well, then, okay, well, then you can make the same counterexample with 0, 0, and 1, 5. Oh. Then query the point uh, 2, 6.
Yeah, because the, oh, the problem is we have the we're not including the horizontal line that comes from a previous diagonal. Right. Yeah, hmm. I think this approach is just busted. We gotta hydrate. Damn. All oh, right. Then we did terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, still some good problem solving. All right, socket. Let's solve C. We have one minute. <laughs> we uh, we beat John. <laughs> nice. That's what. Oh man. That's the goal. Wait, why right? did we? Why didn't we realize this was wrong? That was pretty bad. I don't know. It was just too exciting. Um, and then we could just do it on stream and then. <laughs> Somebody asked in your chat, "What's with John?" He's <laughs> he, he's just our friend who did this contest, um, which, by the way, was from four thirty a.m. to six thirty a.m. in his time zone. So he basically did it in like exactly the middle of when one would be sleeping. All right. Uh, cool. All right, we 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 lost. Sh should we upsolve C on stream? I feel like, I feel like we're getting there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to fix this E. Okay. All right, socket. Let's solve C now. What do you think? That's right. Wow, Kevin. A B C D E. That's impressive. Nice. <laughs> Demoralizer said that he beat us. <laughs> nice. <laughs> He's living up to his name. <laughs> Wait, I don't see you in the... Oh, maybe I haven't friended him. Oh, in the standings? Wait, what? Yeah. I have. Um... Where are you, Demoralizer? Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't see him in the standings. Oh, he said he used an alt. Well, th this famous streamer is publicly admitting he uses an alt. That's a... Uh, on stream. That's truly heinous behavior. Where's Mike? Is Mike in the chat? No, that's a nice picture, though. All right, Socketh, do you have any insight on this? Uh, why don't the why don't the column wise permutations mess up the row wise permutations? <laughs> Report him. <laughs> um, what the hell happened here? So, oh, actually, uh, I think Socketh's audio might be messed up. His in Discord, his thing is constantly lit. Okay, never mind. Now it's what? not lit. It's lit. But I can't really hear... Wait, did you say something? Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, now I can hear you. I don't know. For some reason I couldn't. Alright, so let's try one of these examples. Um... So... If you have one, two, three, two, three, one, three, one, two, and you invert all the rows, then you get one, two, three, um, three, one, two, I think, and then Two, three, one. Wait a second. Do you always end up just... <laughs> Wait, a okay. Hold up. If you apply 
one of the row wise or column wise inversions are you just permuting the rows of the actual matrix or am i just getting bamboozled by this sample i think it might just be a coincidence hmm all right let's try another example one two three four three Oh no. I don't even know how to make an example. This is such a complicated a restriction. What are you using for typing? Can you show? Um I have a keyboard. Oh shit. <laughs> Demo Demoralizer offered a hint and then he gave the hint, which are with the hint was you are probably going the wrong way. Wow, am <laughs> amazing hint. What are you using for writing? Oh, okay. Um, so I'm using Google Jamboard, and then I'm using an iPad and a Apple Pencil. But I might switch to like a Wacom tablet or something. Wait, whoa, Mount ACR, did I miss your sub? Or was that... Wait, yeah, I don't, I don't see it in the list. Okay, oh, oh, that was last stream. Okay, that's why, that's why. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Um... Okay, so we saved this implementation as e totally wrong. .cc. I think the building the diagonals from like top left to bottom right idea can work here. Wait, somebody said in your chat that your e passed pretests. Uh, I don't think it passed pretests. I think it passed samples, right? Or did it really pass pretests? Did I fail sys tests? That would be... <laughs> that would be kind of crazy. That would be impressive. Um, <laughs> how do I figure out? No, there's at least 11 pretests here. Yeah, there's like 13. So yeah, I yeah, yeah. failed pretests. Is it different color when you're virtualing? I don't know if that's uh, still true, though. OK, guys, we got 213th. That's that's really bad. And also, you didn't beat us, Demoralizer. You tied us. We're <laughs> equally bad. Wait, he tied us? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of that's kind of crazy, right? Because like, there's very fractional scoring, right? Like, he well, got the in, exact in same points. Code force is scoring. Yeah. yeah, it's not that crazy. I mean, like, everyone is a multiple of, uh, well, I guess just a multiple of two. Wait. Yeah, so to tie to tie on A and B, you'd, you'd have to, uh, I was going to say you had to solve A on the same parity of minimum. That's not true because of penalty, because penalty is, like, two mod four. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, his time to solve A and B, like, exactly balanced ours. Um, yeah, basically. Also, like you can't. Yeah, because why did you have to? Why did you have to get a wrong answer on knapsack? You got to code knapsack right, <laughs> so that way he doesn't have any uh, claim to fame here. Oh, we got a wrong answer on V. He also got a wrong answer. Interesting. All right. All right. All, all, all revealed. You know why Demoralizer has an ult? So that he can uh, keep streaming? It's the same reason as you. Yep. <laughs> well, okay. First of all, I don't have an ult. Um, so, well, you know. Okay. It's the same reason that, like, you. It's would the same reason that I didn't do today's either. round or tomorrow's round. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. His profile picture is imposter. 
Okay, so Hmm. <laughs> uh, demoralizers all is right. Oot Karsh. Oh man, I think I need another restroom run. <laughs> I'm gonna come back and fix this. Eat. Okay, so he here's my thought uh, about C socket. Let me know if this sounds right. Oh, do you have to go? Yeah, I'm going to have to drop off in a bit. OK. I hope you solve it, though. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, cool. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it was fun. Good luck. All right. See you. Um, to the stream, I'm not saying see ya. But uh, Socket has dropped off the call. All right, let's see. All right, let's look at Demoralizer's blog. Yeah, there was this other person who had an alt who liked to show off their graph because they went from, I think the they hydrant. skipped orange or something. Wow, this is a thousand. Oh my gosh. I guess this is fair. This is like an okay satire of like, uh, of this really common trend, which is like, Oh my gosh, how did you make red in three months? What's your secret? When the secret was like, this person practiced for like five years. Um, and then create an account after that. Where like the people who make LGM in like three months are not starting from like Hello World. <laughs> okay, so I have some hypothesis about this. Which is that all of these things are just going to be cycles like one goes to two two goes to four four goes to... okay so my hypothesis for c is that everything has to be a cycle all the rows have to be cycles and all the columns have to be cycles in order for the initial matrix to be valid at all Yeah, I think that seems right. So let's say you have a cycle like, and I'll, I'll start zero indexing instead of one indexing. So let's say we have a cycle like, uh, oh, I guess I'll start with this cycle as an example. Two zero three one. Then, if we want to invert this, we would I guess reverse the cycle. So zero. So okay. So zero would go to two. Then now we need two to go to zero. Uh, oh, someone asked cycles, like loops, for loops. Um, so a permutation is a cycle if each, if you take one element and you follow where it goes, and then it keeps going and eventually reaches all the elements. Um, hmm. 
but I guess Hmm. I think I have a complicated, semi-complicated implementation for E. For which one? E. <laughs> nice. It's like the building the diagonals thing that I was mentioning earlier. Oh, like, okay, like the initial thing where we're like, let's just figure everything out. Just build, yeah. Um... Yeah, and I mean, it should work. Uh, it's like maybe not the cleanest implementation, but I'm pretty sure it should work. Oh, yeah. So as a team, we got like a like an orange performance, I think. Yeah, as a like <laughs> minimum red team. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pretty cool. bad. All right. But we still beat John, so... Life's good. All right, seems we all this wrong code. Crow, yeah, yeah, this contest was quite hard. Um, I mean, if you look at the solve counts, just in general, I think that uh, there's just like this huge drop here. And so, honestly, like C, D, and E are all like somewhat similar difficulty. Um, C is probably still the easiest one, but um, I do think there's the fact that most people are going to attempt C, and a lot of people who attempted C like didn't even really attempt a D or E. So of course, it's going to have a higher solve count. Um, so in reality, I would say like all three of these are somewhat similar, at least in difficulty. We've got a hydrate. Oh, Kason forty eight ended up getting fourth. That's pretty. Yeah, good. he did pretty well. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we were like, <laughs> uh, I think at the beginning, right? You mentioned that we were doing around the same as him. <laughs> uh, no, I just mentioned that he got C. Oh, right, right. Okay, never mind. Yeah, we're we're bad. Okay, we need to fix All some right. of our badness. I'm gonna ask Endagorion for some uh, for some help. Um, so I'm kind of curious. Uh, of the many different things that I said, I guess the main one being trying to solve this one dimensional version of the problem. Um, was this kind of on the right track as to the framework that I should approach this from? <laughs> also, Neil, somebody said that they're halfway to word banning you from saying uh, uh or um. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe I need to bump up that price. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a real word. Uh, I actually saw something online about about um like the words uh and um. Oh, part of what you said was cut off that's, by the That's Twitch not bad, though. That's, like, actually a helpful ban in some ways. Yeah. Uh, I, I read that those words fulfill a valuable purpose in in-person communication. Because otherwise, if you paused and didn't say, uh, then somebody else would think you were done talking. But then, yeah, when, when public speaking or streaming, you want to avoid them. But um, mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> oh, uh, Endogorion, what I was asking about was, oh, the question of why it's always Aladdin Square is worth investigating. All right, cool. I will think about that then. Um, yeah, the part that I was wondering if it was kind of on the right track was I tried to solve this one-dimensional problem of if you just had a permutation and your only operations were invert, uh, left shift, or right shift. And I think Socket then I came up with the solution to it that that works, but not really clear on how to extend it. So yeah, all right, I'll think about why is it always a Latin square if it starts as a Latin square.
<laughs> so I guess I'll try a simple three by three example. All right, so what we're doing here is we're considering just a, like a generic input and so we have that all these things are distinct. And the example given in the input was 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1. Kind of like the simplest possible example where you just kind of put in the minimum thing that, oops, I wrote this wrong. OK. <laughs> if there's an implicit, it <laughs> yeah, that actually, like, I didn't even think about that um, that aspect of, oh, that's kind of weird, actually. Why does inverting along one dimension not mess up the other ones until, like, <laughs> almost the very end of our virtual contest? Um... Okay, so if we invert the rows, then P11 would go to some element here. Okay, I, I can. I think I can find the starts of the diagonals now. I just need to find the ends. I found this one, and then I found this one. One, two, and then four, three. Yeah, and so on. OK, so Right, there's the y x. Hmm. Okay. So right, okay, so So if we want to invert all the rows, what we want to do is we want to take wherever there's like a one. What's the best way to think about this? So we want whatever goes to one. So the inverse of this will be
Okay. So the first column will become like the index of one in each row if we find the inverse. And we know that those are all going to be distinct because um, we already knew that there was only exactly one one in each column and exactly one two in each column and so forth. And this would be like the index of two. Um, and then so on. So as an example for this one, if we invert the rows, then the first thing, the index of one is one, then the index of one is three, then the index of one is two. And then here the index of two is Right, okay, yeah, of course. <laughs> then here the index of two is one. Okay, so I think this does show that if you have a, so you don't even need like a super special type of Latin square or anything. If you have any sort of Latin square, this operation will leave it as a valid Latin square. Hmm. And then what if we were to invert the columns instead? Well, Not really sure what I would want to do with this yet. So the thing about building the diagonals that's weird is we have to we have to do this thing where we instead of just like inserting into the sec tree, we have to like delete from the sec tree. And it should still work. Oh wait, let me just do this. It should still work, but it makes it more complicated. Hmm. I should. Cool. Uh, yeah, Crow, I just use home and end. I'll try this more complicated looking Latin square. I wonder if I can just copy it. All right. One, two, three, four, four, one, three, one, four, two. Three. 
Yeah, I feel like uh, a lot of IDEs are really nice, but having Vim key bindings is just super nice. So, I think a lot of major IDEs also, like IntelliJ and stuff, just let you use Vim key bindings. We want to do here. Set. So, oh, wait, super annoying. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I can kill this, but it's like, this might be an overcomplicated solution. I have to like have two seg trees and then like remove things from them and then it gets kind of messy. Yeah, I might have to call it quits and go eat. All right. Yeah, I'll try C for a little bit more, and then I probably also should should end the stream soon. Yeah, that sounds good. I might. Um... Okay, I think I'll go for like maybe I'll go for like ten more minutes, and then if it's not like super close at that point, then I'll just call it a day for the stream, and then I'll upsolve this later. All right. I'm going to mute on Discord. Or sorry, I should have said that before I muted. I was going to say, I'm going to mute on Discord, by the way, since we're kind of solving uh, separate problems. Sure, sounds good. And according says there's a non-terrible solution for E. Uh, yeah, maybe what I'm doing... Okay, so let's go back to trying to figure this out. So we can either permute the rows or the columns. If we permute the rows, we want the index of one from each row. So that's one, two, three, four. And then if we permute the columns, we want the index of one in each column. So that'll be one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. So when you shift 
um, vertically or horizontally, you're not affecting the indexes or the indices at all. And when you shift, okay, well, I'll be a little bit more precise. Maybe I'll be a little bit less precise. Do these two operations commute, I guess would be the question. So, if you find, so if you invert the rows first and then the columns, what you're doing is you're finding the index within each column of the one within each row. Sorry, the you're finding the index within each column of what ends up having a one. Um, I'll hide the Discord icon because I'm deafened. Okay, so yeah, so if you first invert rows, I guess they call it I and then C, then the top left element will be, you want to find the index of a one in the first column after applying I, which means whatever was in the first. So the index of a one within the first column means that that element is the element that was originally at. Oh, okay. So if you apply a row, wait a second. This doesn't exactly make sense to me. So we want to find where was the one in the first column after the row inversion. The first column is the indices of everything in the rows after the row inversion. So if there's a one in like, let's say there's a one in like the fifth row in the first column, then that means that before any operations in the fifth row and the um the fifth row and the first column had a five is that what that means Oh, 20 pixels said in the chat, it seems operation I transforms matrix from form row column value to column value row. Wow. That sounds like a really cool way to look at this. So... I see. So if we have some random matrix like 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, then you can kind of think of this first thing as 1, 1, 1, then 1, 2, 2, then 1, 3, 3, then Basically, like if you have I comma J comma V, and then you apply the operation I, then what you do is 
the i th the i stays the same, right? The rows stay the same, but then within that row, you end up replacing all the elements of your tuple with this. Um, that's a really clean way of, of looking at this 20 pixels. Um, okay, and then the operation C would change, um, it would do this. Not J V J E I. Oh, did I miswrite this? Row column value, row value. Wait, hold on. Wait, so 20 pixels, uh, I don't I don't quite understand the comment of not, comma, and then some stuff. Are you saying that this is written incorrectly and it should be amended? What is operation I? It's inverting the rows, right? Yeah, okay, cool. So I think, no, I think this makes sense. Yeah. I think that I of I J V equals J V I. Um. Well, I guess. All right, nice highlighting, but um, I'll only accept real hydrates. So I think that, okay, unless I'm missing something, when you apply I, stuff that's in the same row stays in the same row and you like rearrange it. Oh my gosh. All right, I better hydrate. <laughs> Thanks, I was getting thirsty. So I think stuff that's in the same row stays in the same row, right? So wouldn't you um Right, like if you imagine like a just a normal permutation, right? You have I comma V, and then all those ordered pairs change to V comma I ordered pairs. Um so I think this is right. Maybe it's equivalent in some way. But okay. Let's try R. Oops. So now when you do R, that would be uh I plus oh whoops, no. I J plus one V L gives you I I keep writing my commas like J's, it's kinda weird. So, okay, so now we can think of the input as just a big list of these, like, tuples, and then we want to apply the exact same transformation to all of them. So maybe we can just figure out a way to express, um, 
express these transformations in a way that allows for like easy composing. Hmm. So I think what we can do is we can just start, I guess we can just pick like any representation and like it should be fine. I guess like the simplest one is probably like what permutation of the original indices are we considering? And then um, what is like the current offset of everything? Um, so let's try coding this up. Or at least let's try starting to code this up so that we can kind of understand this a little bit better in, in code. So I guess we can actually write, maybe we can write all the permutations like this, or all the operations like this. So what this would be doing is we would swap perm one, perm two, and we would swap add one, add two. Is that? So right, we want to keep track of Yeah, okay. Cool. Oh, I'll make this uh, a little bit more visible. Cool. And then void r. Whoops. So let's read the input real quick. Um,
So I'll just call this uh, operation equals. So we want to initialize this with uh, just 0, 1, 2 and 0, 0, 0. And then, okay, cool. So now. This is a little bit like messy, but all right, let's let's try it. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to transform we want to transform all these input things um, Okay, so now we just need to actually apply the transformation to these tuples now that we've done it. So, does this reputa representation make sense? Yeah, so Oh, and I guess I actually do want to zero index everything. I guess I can do that at this point. And then I can do that.
I like using auto. Okay. So what we want to do here will just be this, and then All right, this didn't compile. Let's see why not. Expected oh, that that semicolon always gets me. Uh, maybe because I used to do Java, where after like a function or a struct, you don't need a semicolon. Oh, and I'll try printing an extra blank blank line after each one, though it will be easier to read. So I appear to have never transformed the input at all. It's kind of interesting, actually. Down and right. Oh, nice. Uh, welcome, everybody, and thanks, Neil, for the raid. Um, <laughs> so I think we're... For those who just joined in, um, we're kind of in the finishing stretch of C, as far as I can tell. Um, though I appear to have some implementation troubles. Oh, I see. The problem is I'm missing an ampersand there. <laughs> Uh, favorite food? Um, I don't know. I like a lot of foods. Um, I really like nachos. Oh, I gotta, I gotta hydrate. Nice. Um, I do like water. That's one of my favorite foods for sure. Um, I am red on code forces. Is water food? Uh, yeah, maybe not. All right, I guess I'll delete my debug. Okay, great, this actually passed the samples. Um, so I think this might actually be a correct solution. Wow, this is like really clever. Uh, 20 pixels, nice nice insight with the, with the tuple stuff. Okay, it banned me from submitting, maybe because of the virtual that ended. I'll try again. Nice, we got accepted. Um, all right, so I think John mentioned that he almost uh, Wait, tons of tons of things make food out of food. Um, oh, Cabo twenty five says that if you're stuck for ten minutes, 
yeah um yeah it's definitely good to like work at a problem over a lot of time um though it's also kind of uh it's always difficult right <laughs> Plants produce food, um, but, like, I guess I'm saying a lot of things make food out of food. Anyways, um, Okay, cool. Um, all right, let's look at John's submission that was apparently off by, I think he mentioned to me that it was off by one character. So I'm kind of curious to see what that is. All right, I changed my mind. I don't want to read his code. Um, cool. All right, so we solved C uh, with a lot of with a lot of hints, but that was definitely a super cool problem. Um, I'm gonna see if the editorial is up and how they phrased it. Oh, this is kind of kind of long. All right. So I'll open the editorial on one side and then I'll open my code on the other side so we can see how they correspond. Okay, so let's, yeah, so let's zero index things. If only shift operations were present, we can solve it in linear time, makes sense. Okay, so yeah, so here we have the set of all tuples, i, j, and then the value. Um, imagine them as points in 3D. Okay, that's cool. Shift operations apply um, plus one and minus one. So that's where we have this. And Instead of the given points, let's keep track of where the point zero, zero, zero. Oh, by the way, if any of you are new to my stream um, from the raid, be sure to follow and I upload my stuff to YouTube later. So you should subscribe there if you want to watch it on YouTube. Okay, so the inverses are a row inverse operation. Um, okay, cool. Cool. So this corresponds pretty well to I guess how we how we approached it. Like we have our our permutation of the coordinates and then our shifts for each coordinate and then these are what the operations do. Um, shifts do not affect them, but inverses swap two of them, depending on which coordinates were summed. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay, awesome. And then, yeah, did you write all these problems? Let me see if the announcement says... Oh, cool. It was like a team collaboration. Yeah, I really liked these problems. Um, I definitely liked, I guess the two main ones that I thought a lot about were A and, how do I find the round from here? I liked A and C for sure. Um, those are the two that I probably had the most. Oh, uh, oh, what does preparing mean other than like, 
I guess it's like you came up with the original problem idea and then they helped you with like coming up with test cases, like the checker, um, making sure the statements were good. Is that is that the kind of stuff you're talking about? Cool. Yeah, these are pretty, pretty inspired. I definitely liked this one. Um, I did like a number theory stream, I think like a week ago, and like this would have been a really nice problem for that. Um, since I feel like there's a lot of kind of core number theory concepts, like divisibility and like the relationship between like divisibility and like, I don't know, subtracting two numbers, I guess. Um, yeah, awesome. Um, let's see. Did, uh, did Neil end up finishing B? I guess I'll, I guess it wouldn't show up here. Or sorry, not B, but E. Okay, nice. I will skim Neil's solution. Um. All right, it's pretty long. <laughs> All right, I think I'll check that problem out more later. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, I think this is probably a good time to end the stream. Um, so we finished the contest, and then we did a little upsolving. Shout out to Endigorian also for helping out in the chat. Definitely awesome to see one of the problem authors. Uh, providing their insight on the problem. Uh, cool. So yeah, thanks so much, everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, be sure to follow on Twitch if you aren't already. And all the, all my streams, um, I did a stream earlier today where I went over a beginner contest as well, at Coder Beginner Contest, and those should both be up on YouTube in a day or two. Um, yeah, all right, thanks so much.